Hello, today we're going to talk about DNA, its structure, and the replication of this. Um, just some fun facts about this. The human cell contains at least two meters of DNA, um, and a nucleus is only five micrometers in diameter, so that's pretty impressive. Um, there's two types of chromatin, okay? We have euchromatin, which is the active chromatin, the chromatin that's going to be transcribed and put into a protein. And then there's heterochromatin, um, which is highly compacted chromosomes, which is pretty much inactive, meaning it's not going to be transcribed. So as far as the structure goes, we know that it's a nucleic acid, and it's composed of repeating nucleotides. Now, a nucleotide consists of a phosphate, a sugar, which is deoxyribose, and a nitrogenous base. And the bases that we have are A, T, G, and C. So if you look here, we have purines, which are the bigger bases. And then we have pyrimidines, which are the smaller bases. So you can see that the purines are A and G. And one way to remember that is the saying pure for purines as gold. So pure as gold. And they have two rings where the pyrimidines are smaller and they are just T and C. Now each chromosome that we have in our body contains about 140 million base pairs. Now, DNA is double-stranded, okay? And this was kind of found out um, in 1953 by Watson and Crick. Um, there was a lot that went about to figuring out that DNA was the genetic material. There were a lot of people that were trying to figure it out. Um, however, Watson and Crick did find out that it was a double helix. Um, and one of the things that they did is they looked at um, an X-ray radiograph from Rosalind Franklin. Um, she was studying DNA also. She, they kind of treated her like a secretary, um, but they saw that, wow, the way that it looked, it was definitely in a double helix. So on the sides of the ladder are the sugar and phosphate. And in the middle are the bases. So right here, oops, right here is a nucleotide, okay? And you can see here what bases go together. A goes with T and G and C go together. And just how it goes is that we have a goes with T, G goes with C. So a purine and a pyrimidine go together. Now the strands are considered to be anti-parallel. And how that is, we say that it goes to 5 prime to 3 prime strand and then a 3 prime to 5 prime strand. Where that prime comes is that the carbons in the ring of deoxyribose are numbered. So you can see it goes 1 all the way through 5. So the 3 prime is here, and the 5 prime is there. An anti-parallel means that the strands run in opposite directions. Now, DNA is highly condensed. It is wrapped around proteins and folded up. It has to unwind in order for replication to occur. All right, so in eukaryotic cells, which is what we have, DNA is wrapped twice around histone, proteins which form nucleosomes and then a continuous thread of DNA connects the nucleosomes together like a string of pearls and those strings are wound to form chromatin fibers that turn into more compact structures so again it's very condensed and it does need to unwind in order for it to replicate so DNA replication this is the process in which DNA is replicated. And if you remember from the cell cycle in meiosis, it occurs in interphase. Okay? Um, Semi-conservative replication means that two parental DNA strands separate and each constructs a new complementary strand. 
So what we're saying here is each replicated DNA molecule has one parental strand and one new strand. One is called the template, which is the mold used to shape the complementary basing that we had with the base pairs. Um, and each DNA strand is a template, okay? So what happens is the DNA is going to unwind, and if you can see the bolded, all right, each one is going to be a replicated DNA strand. So you're going to use the basis here as a template to base pair to make an exact copy. All right, so as far as the steps goes, all right, we have DNA. The DNA strands need to unzip, so the bonds need to break between the hydrogen, um, I'm sorry, between the nitrogenous bases. So the hydrogen bonds need to break. That allows the strands to unwind, okay? Now an enzyme helicase is going to help that unzipping process. And then the free bases that are found in the nucleus are going to then base pair with that template strand. And then they're going to join together, and that's done by an enzyme called DNA polymerase. Now, in prokaryotes, they just have one loop of a chromosome, one chromosome. So replication moves around the DNA molecule in only one direction, occurring at the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. And it's going to occur at the origin of replication. Now, that whole process takes about 40 minutes. Eukaryotic cells are a little bit more complicated. Um, they can occur at numerous regions on the DNA strand, and they're called replication forks. So this point here where it unwinds is called the replication fork, um, and it kind of creates a bubble. Now, this occurs at a rate of 500 to 5,000 base pairs per minute, all right, which is a pretty impressive feat, okay? So just to go again, the helicase is going to break the hydrogen bonds between the bases. Okay, um, We are going to be able to have the strands um, unwind. Okay, And then what happens is the free nucleotides are going to move in, and this is going to occur in the 5 prime, 3 prime direction. And then we have the DNA polymerase that's going to help. And actually, it's going to be a proofreader, too. It's going to help make sure that we do not make any mistakes. Now, one thing to point out is because it's going in the 5 prime, 3 prime direction, um, one strand is made continuously. So if you see in this direction, because we're adding bases in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction, we can keep adding the bases. So as this molecule unwinds, this structure just keeps growing. However, the second strand is called the lagging strand because every time it unwinds, it forms a fragment. So this is where it unwound first, a fragment was formed. It unwound a little more, a fragment was formed. If it unwinds a little more, a fragment will be formed. Unwinds a little more, a fragment will be formed. These are called Okazaki fragments because the guy named Okazaki um, figured it out. And again, it's a little slower because it is broken up into fragments, and then they will then have to bond together again. And that is going to be done by ligase. It's going to help that. Okay? All right. So here's a little problem for you. Okay, we want to determine the base sequence of the daughter DNA replicated from the following parental strand. I just gave you the answer. So here's the DNA strand, and then this is what is going to be the replicated part to make a complete DNA molecule. Okay, so there's some times where DNA needs to be repaired. So as far as this goes, UV radiation we know damages DNA. And that actually causes thymine dimers to form. A thymine dimer is a di adjacent thymines on the same strand covalently bonding together. Now, I just want to point out the DNA polymerase is very accurate. It will make maybe one mistake in 100,000 base pairs. And it is capable for checking. And it also can fix its errors if it is noticed in time. But sometimes the DNA does need to be repaired.
Okay. So it's going to be repaired by two different processes, photoreactivation or excision repair. Okay. So the photoreactivation is going to use light energy to split that thymine dimer. And the excision repair repairs the enzymes by cutting out the damaged areas and then going to seal it back together. And there's one other thing that's going to happen. It's the mismatch repair. These are enzymes are going to proofread newly replicated DNA for base mispairing, and they're going to correct the error. Okay. Faulty DNA repair results in a chromosome breakage, and that will increase the chances of cancers. Okay. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.